it's my lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Grounds Crew. As always, I'm your host, Shaw Gerson, along with my co-host, Billiam Rom. Billiam Rom. Welcome back, guys. Before we get started, as always, we make, sure you, we make sure to ask you to like and subscribe. Toss us a review. Leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Um, big news in MLB this week. Um, they, uh, they've kind of been talking about it a lot already, but they are going to be cracking down even more so, doubling down on the foreign substances that pitchers use um, and have been using forever, pine tar, um, like homemade tacky substances, whatever it is. Um, the minor leaguers, they just dropped a 10-game suspension on four different guys who were um, using foreign substances, and they're definitely already talking about it making its way into the MLB. Um, and this really came up last night as well because uh, Cleveland Indians pitcher uh, James Karinchak was seen in multiple angles kind of using something in his glove. You could see his fingers like he'd press into the glove and like he'd go to pull away and his fingers would get stuck and like his pine tar or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, social media is having a field day with it, you know, ban him, suspend him, whatever. Um, and, and, and it definitely seems like more than ever MLB is trying to make a whole push to get this out of the game. Um, and it's a big topic. My problem is is that <clears throat> MLB consistently allows the things that the other leagues don't allow. Mm -hmm. Like I I liken this I liken to the using of pine tar somewhat similarly to how James Harden and Trey Young fabricate contact. Mm-hmm. It's changed the game dramatically that those two players now score easier mm -hmm. because they're able to use the rule to, like, do it. And everybody looks at it and goes, this doesn't look right. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like something. But they're letting it go because it was fun. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's like, well, basketball used analytics, and now everybody only shoots threes and only tries to draw contact. Mm -hmm. So, like, Basketball has gotten monotonous and boring. Mm -hmm. There's not variable ways of winning. So, like, you know what we're going to do next year? That won't be a thing. Like, they've already come out and said, like, next year won't be a thing. MLB is like, guys have always cheated. We talk about it on this show many times. Like, baseball is a game of cheating. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, I give shit to the Astros because they, like, took it to, like, a deluxe degree. <laughs> But <laughs> yes. every single, like, team, organization, group has, like, the unwritten rules of what's allowed to be cheating. Mm -hmm. And all the last, like, two years, everybody's been talking like, yeah, yeah, guys use stuff on their hands. Yeah, 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 yeah guys, are, guys are all using stuff on their hands. And you've seen, like, these crazy-ass spin rates go up and everything mm -hmm. else. Why now? It's because hitting's down, because they mess with the ball, and yep. they didn't realize that if we mess with the ball and these guys are cheating, this becomes no-hitter city, mm -hmm. and we can't let that happen. Yep. Like, what's your – you're a pitcher. Like, what's your take on the foreign stu substance idea? I mean, it's definitely – like, it's been in the game forever in one way or another. There were spitballs spit in the 1920s. Yeah. Like, catchers had sandpaper on their shin guards in the, like, 50s and 60s. Like, there was always some level to it. I get that yep. they've been trying to phase it out, but pitchers always find some way, somehow, like – I don't, I don't really think it matters all that much. Like, I get, like, it makes you a little better, but at the end of the day, you still have to execute it. Personally, I was never really a fan of, the, of Pine Tar. I just never, like, I did try it. I tried rosin, whatever, but I just never felt like it. I was just, like, good with it. I think it's definitely a an opinion thing. Like, I know, there, like, a lot of pitchers in the bigs, because obviously it is a known thing that people use this stuff. There's mm -hmm. definitely a, a bunch of different ways they go about it. Some guys make their own stuff. Some people just use Pine Tar. You've seen it, you know, countless times this season alone. Um, I, I I don't really think it's a big deal, honestly. I, I get why MLB, like you just said, why they're actually like putting some focus on it again is because they want hitters to get back in the game and have a little bit more of a level playing field because right now it isn't really that level. But like the fact that they have to like crack down on cheating. Yeah. Well, so guys, like why wasn't there a, like an emphasis on this before? Yep. Well, it's funny you said that before, too. The, the amount of unwritten rules conversations we've had in the last year is just, I'm done with it. Like, let, let's figure it out. Let's let's make some rules then and then just get it over with. Yes. I'm tired and, of and, it. And people want to think, like, why is baseball such a, like, it gets boring or it gets, like, annoying to, one, the the main framework of the game, they, re they refuse to change. Mm -hmm. So instead of changing the framework, they allow cheating. Yep. 
right? Like, oh, you know what? The the like pitchers are now dominating because we made the strike zone huge and they're spitting on balls and scuffing things and everything mm-hmm. else. So you know what? Let's lower the mound back down and then lower the strike zone because they, they got too much of an advantage. Mm-hmm. And cool, like, but it took them five years of just like this is terrible before that moved. Mm-hmm. Then then you look at the steroid era. Guys just start f- dropping shots all the time. Dudes are mammoth. You got guys who look like bodybuilders playing first base. Like Jose Canseco has no business running around out in a field and he's playing outfield. No. Balls <laughs> bouncing over his head to be a home run. Like yep. that that the, that all happens. Oh wait, 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 it took a cheating scandal outside of themselves. Mm-hmm. For them to be like, oh, let's take this cheating out of the game. It's time. You guys built your business on it. Yep. Now, same thing. Like, all these pitchers have been cheating. Trevor Bauer talks about a couple years ago, I know exactly how the Astros have all gotten better as pitchers. I know what they're doing, mm-hmm. right? Their spin rates have all improved. This is all improved. And I know how they're doing it. Well, how they're doing it. I just know. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I think it was, I don't know if it was last season. Last the year season. Before, it was last last season. season. Last season, he he shot up about that. Spit and spin rate. His spin rate went through to the, the roof. moon, and so did his Cy Young. And he won a Cy Young. Yeah. Got forty million dollars. Now he's got a home run problem, and he's getting titted all over the field. Mm-hmm. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. And it's like, <laughs> but it was an allowed cheat. Yep. It was like like Bauer knew about it, and he was talking about it. But he was just bringing it up because he was mad at them because they were cheating en masse. Mm -hmm. Like, they were doing all the cheats. Like, when you play a video game and you find out that there's cheat codes, it's like, do I want to turn on God mode? Or will I have no fun if I can't do... If there's no thing that can, like, stop me. Right. Instead, I'll just do that I have infinite bullets. Yeah. Right? Like, I can never run out of bullets no matter what I do. So I can just pull the trigger. So at least, yeah, now I'm having fun and I have... He's mad because they were trying to turn on God mode. Mm -hmm. And they were putting in the cheat code for everything. He's like, you guys can't do all the cheats because that's an unwritten rule. Don't do all the cheats. Mm -hmm. You just have to do some of the cheats and it's fine. Yep. And other guys have talked about organizations have cameras on guys stealing signs. Other People are still stealing signs, guys. I don't know if you all know this, but there are other... Your favorite team is cheating right now in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. Because there's no rule... That says exactly what they can and cannot do. Mm-hmm. Like you look at the NFL, don't videotape another team shit. Yeah, done, done. Patriots draft picks gone. This gone. Mm-hmm. This gone. Some they were doing a uh, a behind the scenes for the Patriots, and they happened to be in like the booth, and the offensive coordinator was there. Mm-hmm. They got popped. They got in trouble. Oh, like, did they? Do not video. Doesn't matter. We don't mm-hmm. care the circumstances. That done. Penalty. MLB is like, mm, what camera did you use? The camera's from 1988 and you're using VHS? Say no more. Go ahead and do that. That's <laughs> cheating that we've been doing for a long time. That's the right amount of cheating. Yep. And it's like, it's so It subjective. really is. Like, like as, on the scale of 1 to 10, where are you cheating? How Are you at, are you at the 6 or are you at the Astros 9-10? And then, oh, you're out of six? Cool, you're fine. Hang out. You're good. We'll Did you ever it. cheat playing baseball? They ever cheat playing baseball? I don't know. Probably not just at a, because we didn't play it like that high level level where like there some of that stuff was available. Maybe I, like, like I said, I did probably use pine tar at some point in my life to like test it out, which isn't legal, but I, I, that was probably the extent. I quote unquote cheated all the time playing football, mm-hmm. right? Grab a dude, don't let him get off his own block if you're on defense. Pull him the direction you want to. Mm-hmm. While a guy blitzes in a wide open hole and nobody can get to him because I'm holding the man who's supposed to block him. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to get free from me. And I'm like, no, no, you're with me today. This is so I, if somebody catches it, it's a penalty. Yeah. Right? I broke a rule. Right? Mm-hmm. But I got away with breaking the rule. Right. But there's literally a guy there throwing a flag if you break the rules in a baseball players, it's like you know what, actually, now that you say that, I definitely, when I was like 12 or 13, used a rolled bat. Back in the day when BESRs were a thing, rolled bats, like you, like <clears throat> somebody's dad knew somebody with a roller, really sketchy, yeah. and they'd get it all yeah. worked out. Yeah. But like that 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 shit happens. Like we we see like, I, I forget the kid's name, but they put that like 13-year-old kid into the, the Little League World Series, Danny mm-hmm. Almonte. Danny Almonte's ass right. was out there pitching 
lighting kids up, phenom, and then they're like, oh yeah, he was 18 months older than everybody else. They cheated. Yeah. Fabricating people's, like now there's actually, if you're at the lower levels, like there's like a real ID mm-hmm. where y- if you're going to higher end competitions, your kids like date of birth and like a birth certificate, you have to have already done the real ID thing for the camp. Okay. So that way we know how old it is. Yeah. There's at least one kid every every Little League World Series that's like 6'4", 210. Well, so you know Jeremy, <laughs> yeah. right? So he was 6'4", 190 pounds, and he was 13. Mm-hmm. So like when he was showing up at the field when he was 11 and he was 6 feet tall, mm-hmm. everybody was like, that kid drives a car. I am Let's 12. be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> you, heard, you heard him talk, and you're like, well... He's got a squeaky voice for a kid who drives a car. And yeah. It's like, hey, here's his here's his birth certificate. Here's everything else. So like, I get like, it's unfair if somebody's genetically better than you. But then mm-hmm. that, guess what? Like, when we go into aged things and we start using age as the delineator, you're gonna have people who are five feet tall when they're fourteen, mm-hmm. and you're gonna have people who are six foot eleven when they're fourteen. You just gotta kind of deal with it. You can't get around that. Baseball is like, how do we? Use the fact that there aren't rules mm-hmm. to make new rules. Like the shift. We're now talking about let's move the, the – like you can't shift in certain things. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you guys analytics the game to death. It, like literally there's guys standing. Lindor did the best thing I've seen. Mm-hmm. He said, listen, I don't think I'm actually hitting the ball as bad as my numbers show. Yep. Because I'm rocketing some shots right at a dude. But I have three dudes guarding an area that's supposed to have two. Right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay down a bunt down the down the third baseline. And I know I'm going to make it because nobody's going to be able to field it effectively. Yeah, I love that. He's doing that at least once a game right And now. he bunted it down and ran to the base. Yep. Go ahead, keep shifting. I'll take my one base every single time. I'll take it every time. Absolutely. What's going to happen? People have to shift out. They have to do it. But... If you're a 270 pound dude, you ain't laying down bunts and running the first baseline. Yep. So like the shift crushes that guy. Mm-hmm. And again, it, it it it's because baseball doesn't have like here's what you're allowed to do. You know. Mm-hmm. And you look at like like the NFL. A certain number of linemen have to be set up right, beforehand. That's exactly what my thought you was. have to have gotten to a position and maintains that position for a set period of time. Before the snap is called, if you have an established position, you're done. If you go out of bounds and you don't reestablish position and your first person to touch the ball, penalty. You, like, the, here is all of the rules. And the dudes on the field, they know all the rules. Meanwhile, baseball's got a guy taking three balls and walking to first base. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Like, you have, I know what the problem is. Baseball doesn't care. Yep. The rules, uh, we'll just fix them in real time. We'll put band-aids mm-hmm. on everything. And, like, it sucks because you and I, we guys, if you've been listening to the show from the jump, we were very, very upset with how shitty MLB was at promoting the game. Mm-hmm. This season is the greatest season in the promotion of baseball I've ever seen. They're absolutely slaying it. We're, we're, we're watching games on YouTube yesterday. Yep. Like, there's creator things happening. More guys are talking about stuff. Twitter accounts are being Wendy's. Like, mm-hmm. everybody's having fun. They're having fun back and forth. The game has fun beyond the game. And that's what it needed. But the game needs help. The game seems so broken. Yep. Like, so often. Mm-hmm. And it's the unwritten rules. Yep. And you go back, you're mean your Mercedes can't hit the ball now. Yeah, I know. That was... So you talk trash about your player, and now he's just like, you know what, demotivated, w- whatever mm-hmm. you did, whatever happened. Especially so such a young guy like that, like that definitely had an impact, yeah. no doubt. Like, and, and he doesn't want to upset the apple cart too much. So like, he's trying to hold steady, but it, it affects him. These are people. Yep. Right? You see uh, the, the girl Osaka pulls herself out of the tennis tournament. Yeah, because uh, for people who don't know, Naomi Osaka is a tennis champion. Uh, she w- didn't want to do um, like media interviews for whatever reason. They had been asking some tough questions. She got fined, and they didn't revoke the fines, so she left the tournament. So it was like the French Open is one of the biggest tournaments in the world. And, and she left, and she did stuff. And I appreciate her doing it because the reality is that she got really, really famous really, really fast. But I think she's only like 20 or 21. Yeah, she's very young, for and sure. She's now thrust into being the future of her sport. Mm-hmm. 
and she is very, very good. But like, if you're listening and you have a kid, or if you're listening and you are a kid, imagine just all of a sudden being the the best that exists mm -hmm. overnight, and the people wanting something from you at all times. Mm -hmm. That has a a toll on it, and we see guys in the NBA. Um, like uh, Kevin Love talked about his mental health. Yeah. Uh, in the NFL, uh, Hay uh, uh, Hayden Hurst, uh, he talked yes, he about has a foundation as well about that. Yeah. Right. He talked about his mental health and how he was having difficulties and issues when he was mm -hmm. with the Ravens, and now w at the Falcons, he's like, you know, I I've become more comfortable with who I am as a person. Uh, guys, they're people, and then that rolls into like from the emotional standpoint, with not knowing the rules, mm -hmm. how do I participate in the game? If I also have to worry about the fact that I never will know what's allowed because one guy thinks this is okay and one guy's not and there's no hard rule. Yep. So half the guys hate me, half the guys love me, and 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 I'm having pressure and I'm having and people melt. Mm hmm And then you it's the stuff you don't see. Like Marcus Stroman. <sighs> Stroman wears a do-rag underneath his baseball hat, and the announcer from the Diamondbacks is being a dipshit and tries to make what he thinks is a funny joke about, I think that's the same do-rag that Tom Seaver did. It's just a tasteless joke. But then, Stroman decides to tweet a DM he got from a guy mm -hmm. who works for the Department of Defense, it comes out. Yeah. Well, mind you, just on the on the comment for a second, like he tweeted out like, Something completely like positive in response to it of like, hey, like I'm just yeah, gonna people keep talking working. about you are already under under like yeah he was like I'm just gonna overcome like all these racial mm -hmm. undertones and move on like very he's he's always very positive, um but then on the on at the same time he got a DM from someone in the Department of Defense just with straight up absolutely full on racism and just I'm I'm not even gonna read it because it's just a bunch of n words and horrible and he tweeted it and absolutely everyone on Twitter was just eviscerating this guy because it's actually ridiculous that a, this person represents our government and b the fact that like he's receiving. And, and he also said he gets a ton of DMS like this, which is just crazy that it's still like that right now. But like the fact that people think that it's okay, that that's how you talk. And it, yeah. it's the, it's, it goes back to what they've been saying and you've been seeing it again. The NBA guys are actually getting arrested. The NBA is actively participating yeah. in managing these people. Yep. Like, your entitlement and your th sense that I paid for a ticket mm -hmm. or I watched the game entitles me to tell you whatever I want to. But also, you feel like you're protected by something. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the internet, you're pre protected by the fact that you can't hit me in the face. Yep. Right? Like, somebody was joking around. They're like, the dude who threw popcorn on Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. Like, if you saw Russell Westbrook in a club, you wouldn't throw your drink in his face. Yep. You'd look at him and you'd be like, I don't like that guy. And then you'd quietly go to a corner and sip your drink while he was having a great time. And you were just like, mm -hmm. yep. angry about whatever the hell it is that you're angry about. <laughs> well, Dietz, what did, what did you want to happen with Kyrie? I, I feel like if fans are doing that kind of stuff to the athletes, the athletes should be allowed to go face to face <laughs> with them. It's just, you can punch them once a season. Once a season, you're allowed to beat the crap out of these guys. But outside of that, you just need to intimidate them and be like you understand that there's nothing protecting you right now maybe that'll change people's mm -hmm. actions <laughs> yeah I, i'm all for that i, I wish so i wish that was the case i saw somebody i actually no, i was talking to somebody they were they were like oh yeah Kyrie stepped on the logo so like it's fine like he got it he had what was coming to him like what no just like i get it like that's like he's disrespecting that whatever like it's the celtics i don't really care you can't hum a water bottle at somebody just because that happened. Like, I don't care who you are. It's just absolutely mind-boggling. But, like, this goes back to, like, unwritten rules. Yep. Like, you could, you, you come to my house. I mean, that is a written rule. You can't do that. You, you, you come to my house and you, 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 you put your foot on my, on, on like, a, a, a... The a, emblem. A table or something. Yeah. Like, your foot brushes up against it and I hum a drink at you from across my living room. Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Like, what's wrong with me? Like, the overreaction of the century. Like, you can you can disagree with somebody's actions, but he's not harming anybody. And, like, you have to, like, where is humanity? That, like, you just, you want to disagree with somebody, you want to dislike somebody for their beliefs, fine. We can all disagree. 
you two disagree with a shit ton of stuff I say, right? We had another dude in here who disagrees with my existence as a human sometimes, <laughs> right? Like, and that's cool. Go listen to episode 116. But also, <laughs> we we also all talk about it like, uh, Dennis, how am I in a, in a fantasy football league? You are the worst. I, I am the worst, right? <laughs> like, I am, I am, I will berate and belittle and I will... There well, is a reason we don't have a company fantasy football. League. Yeah, and there's a reason why I'm only in one. <laughs> yep. Right? Like so so with that being the case, is how I am in the league any bit of who I am as a person in real life? No, not really. You you just love playing the heel, but you also yes. you're very strong in your opinions. Yes. And you will even if you're wrong, you will back your opinion. <laughs> yes. As to the death every well, single time. Well, until you prove me that I was wrong, I can't believe that I was. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the first thing. Um, but yeah, like I, I know who I am and I play it up in sports conversations because it's supposed to be fun. Mm-hmm. How are you guys getting so serious that you think that causing physical harm or physically like spitting on somebody, throwing popcorn on them, pouring beer on them mm-hmm. while they're doing their job is okay. Like I'm going to come to your job and I'm going to watch you type at your little computer. And as soon as you misspell a word. I'm going to throw popcorn at your head and you can't do anything to me. I'm going to sit there while you type and I'm going to yell at the fact that you're slow. Like don't like what gives you the, well, I paid a ticket to go see it. Okay, cool. I'm going to follow the mailman around and I'm going to berate him. I pay taxes. That dude has to listen to everything. I, that's not how that works. Yep. But sports people become so entitled to every little bit of it. It's insane. And, and again, like coming all the way full circle around, if you don't know the rules, it is easy for people to break all sorts of other rules. Yep. Because you give someone an inch, they take a mile, that old phrase. Mm-hmm. If you don't delineate exactly what it is, we get to these moments where guys are cheating crazily. Because you don't have rules. Well, this is the game. This is the way the game was played in, you know, 1890. Like, nothing that we do is the same. Mm-hmm. The rules have to change. People don't want to hear that because, like, nobody likes to change rules in this country. <laughs> it was written on a piece of paper, 1776. That's the way it should be in 2076. Yep. Sure, that makes complete sense. Same thing with baseball, just because it's an old game. Mm-hmm. doesn't mean we have to keep the old rules. Update to survive. Yep. I think that's our rant. Yeah. So on a lighter note, <laughs> Shohei Otani, Otani watch. Otani watch. Uh, last week, Otani had a little bit of a hiccup when he was supposed to have his start. Uh, there, <laughs> The Angels bus broke down on the way to the game, so he hopped on the public transportation for Oakland. That broke down also. So he was late to the game and couldn't make his start. Had a start two days later. Had a great outing for the most part. Uh, five. He's, he, had, he he pitched uh, six and in, six innings. His first five were shut out, and then he uh, gave up a couple runs in the sixth and in the beginning of the seventh before he was pulled. Um, his velo was back up to ninety eight. Um, all his pitches looked good. There was one moment though, which I thought was I really kind of showed who Otani was. Uh, he threw like a 95 mile hour fastball, like right under Mark Canha's chin, and Canha like came after him, like just chirping him and stuff. And Otani's sitting there smiling the whole time, just standing on the mound, like, "What like, do you want from me?" L- laughing because he's like, "I don't understand why we're why 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 are the benches clearing?" Like like it was such like such a baseball like everyone just kind of walked onto the field yeah. and we're just like yelling at each other like. Bruh. For no reason. No reason. Like, you know what I'm going to do to him, to Mark? I'm going to strike him out. Strike him out, throw him out. Absolutely buried him. And, like, that's got to feel bad. Oh, yeah. That, but that's, like, the, that's the best way to respond. That's the I best way that. to respond, but the other, t- that's deflating. Yeah. Like, yep. we've lost everything here. Mm-hmm. We lost the argument. We lost the at-bat. We lost a runner. We thought we were going to be the ones who killed it here. We we're going to put a hit and run on. Yep. And... Strike him out, throw him out. Yep. Mm, way, way, to, way to kill all momentum. You yeah. guys are about to lose. Otani is fired up. I love that. Um, but it's coming out now. Joe Matt's been talking about it a little bit more also that they are having 
trouble like figuring out how to manage his workload. They said they don't really know when his next start's going to be until like two or three days after he pitches because he goes and hits the next day, and then it's like, all right, how's your arm feeling, whatever. So he is starting tomorrow, but they have been saying they're still trying to figure out because as of right now, like there's there's no like path of how, to, how do you actually but manage this. But this also to me goes back to like, baseball being fragile at times Mm -hmm. because guys are like yeah you know what i need to be you know every five days i gotta be every five days like i gotta stay on my schedule if you deviate Mm -hmm. from my schedule at all i fall apart as a human Mm -hmm. and it's like well in college you guys pitch one time a week yeah right in high school you pitch one time a week unless your coach was a a a nut job and you pitch three times a week Mm -hmm. right like you, you it's in the mlb where you start to do it japan one time a week right like it's here that guys start to pitch that they have to be once every five days. Mm-hmm. I just think like get get have a six man rotation mm-hmm. if you're the Angels, right? Have a six man rotation. Let Otani make as many starts as he can. Yep. I'm sh- honestly, I think the, that extra two days was huge for him. Yeah. To, to get that extra rest he needed for sure. And like you can carry an extra starting pitcher on your roster with Otani anyway. Mm-hmm. Because he's already a hitter. Yeah. So, like, because of the fact that you're not carrying a guy who only does one thing, you could either carry an extra reliever, Mm -hmm. an extra starter, or an extra guy who plays some other position. But, like, I would say if your team's biggest issue is not offense, carry more pitching. Mm -hmm. So bring another starter, go get another guy, do something. Yeah. But, like, their pitching's been an abomination. Throw more dudes out there, see what they can do. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 like, that's, that's again, that's a problem where it's, like, you have a unique character. Mm-hmm. You have a unique person. Be unique for them. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Don't start telling me, oh, we're going to have to end the experiment because it's, it's too difficult to manage. Yeah. Like, nah, yo. That's some, like, weakish. Like, don't be that guy. Mm-hmm. Step up and just figure out how you use Otani. My thing is, is that without having Trout in the lineup, it has affected, from my stance, how he gets pitched. Mm-hmm. And it's been more difficult for him to be the guy he is at the plate than he had been. Yeah, no, he he he's definitely cooled off a little bit. Um, but it, it is interesting to see kind of like where his um, his like fatigue sets in when he's throwing and and hitting. Um, but I, I was hyped that he like he looks really strong for the first five. But then as soon as he like has a little bit of trouble later in the game, he falls apart real quick. Um, so I'm definitely interested. Like he's definitely progressing in the right direction. Like we were talking about from the beginning of the season, where his control was absolutely atrocious, to where he is now, just like really locked in with everything. And then it's kind of like, all right, how do we keep pushing your ceiling a little bit more with what you're doing? Yeah, and I, I think they just gotta allow that. If, if five innings looks like what he's best, mm-hmm. cool. Build your team around that. Yeah, absolutely. You get, know, get, get somebody who's a, a decent middle relief guy who could be. He could be your sixth starter guy. Maybe you're doing like a relief uh, a, a relief day, yeah. right? As your sixth man rotation yeah. kind of yeah. thing. We're gonna have um, a we're, we're gonna have him do five. We're gonna have you do four. Yeah, you know, right? And 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 you see that in the minors more. You see that in certain circumstances where you have an opener, not a closer. Mm-hmm. You have somebody come in who does a certain amount of innings. Cool. If if Otani's a four or five inning opener, and he's in the lineup, and you don't really have to do anything to move him. Like, you just bring in another pitcher and he gets to trade out with somebody else? Cool. Yeah. Like, let that be what that's going to be. I I just think that they, like, plan out the variables and then just allow it to take shape. Mm -hmm. But they suck. Yeah. Like, and they're ruining another guy. But, like, if you guys already suck, figure out how you're using this very, very intricate tool. Like, you figure out how Otani can best be utilized. Yep. Now is the time because it looks like they're already out of the playoff race. But. Yes. When's Otani a free agent? Uh, I think he still has a little bit. I don't think Otani has much left. I'm not sure. He got picked up, what, three years ago? He signed through 2022. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So he signed through 2022. So next year is his last year with the Angels. Unless he decides to go somewhere else. Inside of... Now, Otani was an interesting case where he turned down. He didn't want the Yankees. Mm -hmm. He didn't want the big city because he also wanted a place that would allow him to do both. Right. And give him freedom and give him stuff. Now, the Angels are in a major market, Mm -hmm. you know, but they're not the team in the major market. Yeah. Um, So they're able to kind of keep themselves a little bit 
suppressed in terms of how, how much notoriety he needs to handle. Yeah. He also was going to a team that had a big personality in Trout. Right. So, like, for him, he was covered in a lot of the bases that he needed to be. Right. I wonder if that will change into next year. I'd definitely be curious because he's he's gotten big market attention yes. this season. Yes. So. And how much I, is he going to cost? I don't, I don't know. He, he could... He could theoretically be a very expensive piece for what he's able to do, you know. If you really monetized out, what, what, like, what's his ERA right now? Two, so maybe a little bit over two seven, two eight. Because that's my thing. It's like I think I think he's hovering somewhere in the ballpark of a, a a low to mid two ERA. So if he's got a low to mid two ERA right now, he's two seven two. Yeah, so a two seven two, like even if you said he's a three ERA guy, mm-hmm. if he's a three ERA guy who's going to hit thirty home runs, like what do you spend for that? What let's do let's do it this way. What do you what do you pay for a three ERA guy? Twenty five million dollars. Excellent. So he's probably thirty. He's probably thirty. That's, is that low? I, at minimum, so, now so that's you, a minimum. So, so if like, you, what's Lindor? What, what if, was Lindor? Thirty. Lindor's eight years, thirty-four million dollars. So that's what I'm saying. Like, or ten years, ten years. Right. So, so, so he's thirty-four point one million dollars a year. So again, my question is, he's going to be older than Lindor when he comes up on the contract. Sure. Right. For the same thing, he's be, he'll be a year older, right? Mm-hmm. And, but the the challenge is, is if he's allowed to continue to do what he's doing right this second. Mm-hmm. He's got 186 at bats on the season, and he's got 15 home runs. If he finishes around 500 at bats at that pace, mm-hmm. he's going to hit 35 home runs, almost yep. somewhere in that ballpark. He's going to hit close to 35 home runs. If he bats 270 with 35 home runs, and he makes 20 starts mm-hmm. with a th- three ERA, he's got to be. We've talked about this. That dude's got to be in the conversation for MVP. Yep, absolutely. He already but, is. But then what are you extending him at? And if the Angels won't extend him, do they trade him? And if they trade him, what does he sign for and what does he get back? So, ready? here's here's the question, right? We talked about earlier this season, if the Angels suck, they have to trade Trout. Yes. Okay. Would you say Otani's more valuable than Trout? You know I would. Because so, of the so fact that he provides their number one starter and 30 home runs as a right fielder. Yeah. So the new question then would be, you have to keep Otani, right? You have to trade Trout. Because he effectively he's probably going to cost more. But the more reality is, is it's easier to trade Otani's one year right. than it is to trade all of the remaining years of Trout. Sure. Right? Yep. To some degree. You have to, both sides have to take the money into an account. Mm-hmm. But then that becomes the conversation. Can the Angels afford two $40 million players plus Rendon? Like, what's Rendon earning? He, so, like, he got a sizable contract. And, and that's my thing is if Rendon's making $30 million a year also, and you're going to go and you're going to say that you're at least going to have a, seven years, 245, $35 million a year. So, you, you can't sign Otani. Yeah. Like, they cannot sign Shohei Otani to an extension. Nope. And I don't think any team would be interested in taking Otani during a season. Yeah. Because he's too much of a variable. Mm-hmm. You're trading for two players when you get them. Yep. And, like, and that comes back to what's the value? What's the contract? Well, like, well, hold on. Maybe it might not be as hard as you think. Because, like, if, you, if he goes to somewhere who already has, like, a very stab, established rotation and comes in as their, like, five guy just because they already have an established four, let's use say. Use the Mets as the example. Mets is a perfect so example. So who would you trade for first? Who would you trade to the Angels for Otani? They're going to they're gonna want probably, mm, that's a tough one, probably, like, Conforto. Um. So, like, for the Mets to take him in, you're looking at it and you're saying that you probably have to trade. I'm going to say Conforto and Walker. So, I'm going to say Stroman. Okay. Right? If you're going to trade, because if I said right this second today that we're going to get on a phone call and this trade's going down. Mm-hmm. Otani plays right field, so that's Conforto. Yeah. So, now Conforto has to go. Yeah. To let Otani play. Mm-hmm. They're equal with the bat. They're the yep. same bat. Yep. Then you're going to have to trade Stroman for him mm-hmm. because they're equal on the bump. Yeah. So you're in a situation where that's that. 
Then on top of that, who is the prospect that's going to allow you to get Otani, or do you have to at that point? Mm-hmm. And then the question becomes, why would you do that in the middle of the season? Which is why I'm saying I don't know if a team would do it, because you'd have to remove Stroman and Conforto right, to allow him to be maximized in the trade. Mm-hmm. Because you want to get him starting X number of starts. And when you get to the point that the Mets are going to have Peterson, Taiwan Walker, Syndergaard, well, would DeGrom. It be, would it be more like financially efficient? Like what's, what's Stroman and Conforto's combined contract going to be? More than what Otani's Otani Otani making be, right, right now. Right? But, uh, but, uh, fact, but, but Otani's not going to play all the Stroman's time. Stroman's got one more year left. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. And we agree that Conforto's going to sign for somewhere in the ballpark $20 million. Yeah. Per year. Mm-hmm. Right? So if we're looking at that, they get to pay less for Conforto for the same bat. Right. And they get, if, if Stroman signs a contract that's not with them, mm-hmm. they get his rights. They would get a first-round pick as compensation for him leaving anywhere. Right. So if they don't get his rights, they just sign him. They've fixed their pitching staff. They've got a better pitcher. Mm-hmm. They've got at least the number two guy to go in there. So now their pitching staff is better and their hitting is the same. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it multiple times. Your team is now better. Yeah. Right? Well, the Mets, all, the thing is, too, though, is like the Mets already kind of have their DHs picked out. For sure. So, like, I don't even know. Like, I don't really think the Mets would need Otani, honestly. I agree. I'm just using but like, it. Yes. I'm using it as the example. It would of the, definitely be the an, thought experiment. It would have to be the right situation. Because we know the players. Yes. And that's my my thing is if, if a team was trading for a player right now in the season, it's because they feel like he's going to make their team better. Mm hmm. Right? Yeah. You don't trade for Otani if you already are close to winning. Right. Because you it's most a team likely that's don't short need pitching and needs a big bat. And that would that would push them over the edge to be a playoff contender. So I have one team. Okay. I have one team who I think would be a a, a great candidate for it. And it's the Blue Jays. Okay. Because he could yes. DH, he could play right field, and he'd help with their pitching staff. Yes. So immediately that team has more on the bump. Mm. You give them even more in their outfield, and that team takes a push forward. And they look like a team that's got enough pieces that are on the on the big league roster mm. that they're a, a piece or two away. Otani becomes a prize. Yeah. Because if you're a team that's a hitter and a pitcher away, and you give him $30 million a year, You've gotten a, a pitcher for 15 and a hitter for 15 that are going to outperform their contract. Yep. If I gave if I gave Otani 50 million dollars a year, he might out out outplay the contract Very based possible. off of value. Yep. If he makes 25 starts a season for the rest of his career, if he makes 23 starts a season for the rest of his career with a three ERA, and he's a perennial 30 home run guy for the mm. next five years, those two pieces combined are worth $50 million. Yep, absolutely. So anything below that, it's worth it. So, like, the Angels, seriously, I think in this offseason, have to start figuring out how they're going to construct this team. Because mm-hmm. they're broken. Yep. And and it's 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 evident over and over and over again. Because mm-hmm. you guys, they, are, they have four hitters at their prime who are really good hitters. Yep. Right? And they, they're, they're, like, seven games under 500 now. It's insane. And now Trout's out, so I get that like they're losing more because Trout's gone. Mm. But it's not like they had a huge lead when Trout was there. No, they, like, were, they, they were still bottom they, of the league. They, they were when he was there. Yep. Dude, you guys got to reset the roster. Yeah. And you know me. I'm full MLB The Show franchise mode trade everybody. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I'd <laughs> trade Rendon to the Mets. Yeah. I'd say, yo, you guys need a third baseman who can bang? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Here's Rendon. We want... Brett Beatty, we want Alvarez, we want Peterson, mm-hmm. and we want uh, your first round pick this year. Mets would do it in a heartbeat. Yep. They would do it because they're like, it frees us salary cap, maybe we keep Otani. Mm-hmm. Because he's too valuable. That's an, that actually is an interesting move. To, oh, I got to you. Move. I got you excited. You started smiling. Yeah, like, because Rendon, because I honestly, as much as I love talking about it, I don't think they'll ever move Trout. It's too hard and whatever. Rendon is definitely a more interesting piece, especially because he has been injury prone. Like he hasn't yeah. really done anything for the Angels yeah. yet, and I think yes, they probably would rather keep Otani. Yeah. So like, who who and, takes a stab at Rendon, Rendon? When did Rendon sign there? Is this his third year there? Second. 
Maybe Only second. a second? Yeah. Second or first? Definitely not first. No, it's, it's his second. second year. It was second year, yeah. So yeah. this is his second year there, and he signed an eight-year deal? Seven-year deal. Seven-year deal? Yeah. So he's got five years left after this. How old is he? Uh, 31? 30, yeah. 30? Yeah. So he'll be 35. I would say that that's not even that bad. I, I, didn't, I thought he was going to be a guy who was like a Cano contract for a second, Mm-mm. where he's going to be like 70 when he finally is done with his contract. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rendon's, Rendon's an interesting case. Is his last year the most money or? His last year, yeah. His, his last his last uh, four years are going to be the same at 38. So it would be $38 million. So he's yeah. expensive at the back yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They backloaded that contract to make the front few years cheaper. Yep. Right? Because they expected that if he didn't play well, they would trade him mm-hmm. and somebody else would pick up the money. Yep. I see you, Angels. I see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So Rendon's a candidate for being moved, especially this year. Mm-hmm. Because if Trout's hurt, you know you're not winning. Yep. You have to get ready to p- potentially do that. Reset. Then there's teams who are like a hitter away. And we've talked about it numerous times. Chris Bryant to the Mets, we've said. <sighs> Rendon for a pitcher, I would love to see that happen for them. And Peterson was the Mets' first-round pick. And, and he's been either completely electric or complete, like, ass. Yeah. Um, but yep. he's still, what, 23? Yeah, super young. So, like, super he's young. a young pitcher and he's a lefty. Like, he would help them tremendously mm-hmm. from a pitching standpoint. Absolutely. Um, and if the Mets didn't have to do too, too much because of the fact that he's an older dude on that contract and mm-hmm. there's not many people who are interested in taking on $38 million a year, Yeah. that's an interesting case. Oh, I'd love to see that. That would be cool. But like, I, at this point, I think like the Angels have to. So like something, yeah, they got to do something because they 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 either got to start thinking about what they're moving on from this off season mm-hmm. to make this team a winner, or they've got to go complete franchise mode and trade everybody. Because there's no re- like you, we saw it with the Indians. Mm-hmm. The Indians are now solid. Right, and we've seen it with the Marlins in the past, mm-hmm. where they trade a whole bunch the of Marlins people. The Marlins are the are the big like, hey, we, I mean, I know like obviously, I think the Jose Fernandez thing had an impact there. Yep. Um, but they I mean, really moved everybody, and you saw like what that talent actually became. Yep. Like their team was disgusting, and they yep. just didn't have it yep. right there. Right. Um, they're probably the the like the the textbook version of what the Angels probably should yeah, do. Yeah. To to get rid of all this amazing talent, bring back enough young that you can play but if everybody hits their projection you're going to be great in three years Mm -hmm. and and it's going to be cheap yep but like like the i would because i would say the mets are close to that right now yeah right because conforto nimmo jd davis um pete alonzo jeff mcneil they're all still cheap Mm -hmm. like there's not money tied up in them yeah syndergaard cheap Yep. Like, there's not, he's making seven million dollars. Like, cheap. Mm-hmm. What is the next thing? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, so, like, again, the Otani watch has been great to see because I, I love what he does. And it's just so cool seeing all the things he's in. Mm-hmm. And he's got a great personality. And I think he's going to have a long career because I think he'll age well mm-hmm. uh, just because he's already so peak of everything. Right. That even if, like, he's fast, like, if something gives, He'll still provide you massive value if he only did one thing. Right. You know, if he only became a hitter and he was a 275, a 40 home run guy, mm-hmm. who cares? Cool, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it's like, if he focused on one thing, he could just lean into a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, like, I, I, he's a safe bet, but watching the Angels just continue to suck. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. It's so sad. We it had such the high game. expectations for them. Yeah. But either way, I think the trade deadline this year is going to be so much fun. It is going to be a blast. I I, I hope that I around All Star Weekend that there's a lot going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there will be. We were talking about like where who's when things will be moving. It's going to be like that week week after we're going to see all these things start coming to fruition. Hope, maybe we'll have a live show that day. Perhaps somewhere other than this room. I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll maybe. find out. Stay tuned. Wink wink. Appreciate you guys for watching. Appreciate you guys for listening. We will see you next time here on the Grounds Crew. Baseball lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs>